Now, here's Chris. Here we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Chris Wilde Show. We're live on Global Player. I'm not going to cry this morning. I didn't cry the other day. No, no you, you said something in your eye for half an hour. That was yeah, all. that's what Fine. it was. Yeah, that's all right. I'm, I'm a man. Yeah, I suck this stuff up. You're a ruddy bloke. Uh, so you can watch us live on Global Player. I don't know if you want to do that, but you can do that. You can tune in. I'm wearing an oversized T-shirt because I'm so fat at the moment. Hey, hey, now, come God, on. God, I've not, I've not, I didn't train at all last week. Nothing. Mm. I've been eating. Do you remember Chris Moyles? <laughs> <laughs> During the big years. I've probably. been eating his diet this really? week, let me tell you. But it's quite fun, though, isn't it? Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> no, that boy, no green stuff. No, that's it. <laughs> no colours. Do one, quinoa. Don't eat any colours. Yeah. I've, now, what have I had? I've had burritos, nachos. Oh. Last night, I had fried chicken for dinner. Lovely. I was going to have a Chinese. I thought, that's not too bad. And then the delivery was too long. Right. So I ended up going for fried chicken, which is the next best option, right? <laughs> wow. It's absolutely fine, isn't and it? And chips. Yep. Well, you need oh. fried chicken and chips. And the temptation to drink copious amounts of alcohol was huge. Mm. And did you do night. that? No. Oh, okay. Not on a school night. I have to be relatively sensible. Yes, that's good. Uh, but thanks for all the messages that, that came in uh, from Friday morning's show when I was... Yeah, there were many. Well, I was having a mild breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't. You were just sad. You that's just fair enough. vocalising what had happened. Yeah. And so, everyone appreciated it as well. It was... Oh, well, this is... Uh, my pain is here to help everybody else. And it did. It helped a lot of people. Um, it's a weird... It's just a very... I was just telling the, the team before we went on the air, it's a very weird thing. You've got two cats, now you've got one cat. and But the difference is... It's huge. Mm. Mm. And it's riddled with with a minefield. It's a minefield of emotion. Yeah, I'm sure. Of stuff that you just don't think about. Yeah. And I understand... Oh, by the way, I understand if you're listening to this and you don't have pets and you're, you're all sounding a little bit... Let's get another cat. What's the problem? Because about five years and two weeks ago, I'd have been exactly the same. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I would. We never had animals growing up. We never had pets. I had goldfish. They're all called Goldie. Yeah. Um, they are very easy to replace, unless there are people watching who have just had a, the loss of a fish. I, I feel for you. Yeah. They don't last that long, generally, no. goldfish, do they, it seems. And don't they have a no, no or very short memory, goldfish? They don't last that long either, goldfish, I don't think. Well, really... Is it like a five-second memory or... And, and they don't last for long. <laughs> Sorry. It's a bad joke. It is good. Yeah, it's something like that, isn't it? It's very short. Does that mean when they're swimming around the bowl, they, there's a little something in the bowl, a little ornament, and they go, oh, that's nice. And they go... Oh, look at that. That's nice. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Yeah, apparently so. Maybe they're constantly happy all the time. What a great way to be. Do you know, you say that. Years ago, when I first joined the BBC, mm. I went up to Radio 2. And I think I went to see Steve, right? Steve Wright. Steve Wright, right? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, right? I went to see Steve, right? And uh, you used to get... It used to be in Broadcasting House, and you'd get the elevator up to whatever floor it was, and then you would come out, and there was a, there was a little, a little a tiny seating area. And then there was a, a glass wall to the corridor where the studios were. Did you ever go? Yeah. And then you would touch your pass on the little thing and this glass door would open. And I, my pass wouldn't let me in. So I was going up to see Steve and I was waiting for somebody to come and get me. And Jimmy Young came out of the lift. Wow, Jimmy Young. Blasting the pass. Now, for those of you who are too young to realise, Jimmy Young was uh, a singer mm. who then went to work for Radio 2 when it launched. I was thinking of a snooker player. No. You're thinking of Jimmy White. Jimmy White. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's a totally different person. Got it. Although Jimmy Young, very good at snooker. Is he? That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Jimmy the Killer Young, That's they what called, him. called him. Loved a waistcoat. So I'm sat in these seats waiting for uh, <laughs> someone to come and get me, and people are coming out through the glass lighted door, tss, walking out. You're right. Yeah. You waiting for someone? Yeah, just waiting for Paul. Oh, okay. Always. Oh, is Neil here? Yeah. Beep. In the lift they go. Someone comes out the lift. Morning. Morning. Beep. On the pass. Shh. Big glass door opens. 
They go into the studios. And Jimmy Young comes out the lift. Mm. I'm like, wow, it's Jimmy Young, legendary broadcaster. Definitely. Morning. I went, morning. And he goes, beep. Puts his pass on the door. And the big glass door slid open. And he went, ooh. <laughs> like that. As if he was surprised. <laughs> but he would have done that every day. <laughs> he went there for 20 every years. Every single day for years. <laughs> oh, look at that. And I'm, ooh. <laughs> that must be a lovely little thrill for him every day. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, the glass wall moves. Well, that's fabulous. That's why he always had a smile on his face. Yeah. He's always happy. Every day was his first day. Every day, every day was just full of surprises. Oh. Little fish memory update, by the way. Yeah. Apparently, the span of three seconds was proven wrong a while ago. It's now believed their memory can last up to five months. Oh. I don't oh. know how you measure such things, so there you go. Yeah, how do they oh. know that? Yeah. I mean, that might also be out of date. Your name is Jeff. Hey, your name. Your name is Jeff. Okay. Five minutes later, Jeff. Mm. The fish reacted. Mm. <laughs> Apparently, lots of people's goldfish last for like ten years. Really? I thought wait, ours didn't last very long. <gasps> at oh, all. It was twenty-seven. What? Twenty-seven? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. A twenty-seven-year-old goldfish? Yeah. What? what? I thought they Me, yeah. genuinely. I thought it lasted about a month. Maybe that might be a good idea. Yeah, I don't think we should have fish anymore. Oh, look, our goldfish, Gary, lived to the grand old age of 15, Louisa. There you are. Uh -huh. Gary! Gary the goldfish. We should have cleaned the tank out a bit more. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, a bit, a bit of a weird weekend, a bit of a roller coaster weekend. Yeah. Tiff's still away, so it's, you know, that's hard for her because she's, like, she's not home. And then it's just me and Leia. So, obviously, she's getting way more attention than... I'd um, normally give her. Yeah, understandably. And I'm trying to second guess her every time she looks out the window. I'm like, are you looking for your brother? And I get really upset. And she's obviously not. Mm. I don't think. I don't think she is. And then, as I was saying, it's a minefield of hidden emotions mm. where it's like lunchtime. So you got the cupboard and you take two bowls out. Oh. And then you go, I only need one bowl. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be lots of little yeah. bits that keep popping up, oh, isn't there? It's like, you know, when it's dinner time, it's like, Chewy, lay just lay her dinner time. Mm. Oh, God. And then it's like... And then I perk myself up a bit and go, it's going to be all right. And then Tiff rings me and she's all upset. And, it's like, and then someone someone will message me who's got pets and they'll be like, Oh, my God, how are you feeling? Morning, Kate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, Kate and Nick were distraught. Oh, we had a big teary conversation the other night on the phone. That's all three of us, because they've got two little doggies. Right. Yeah. Which are their lives. Because we don't have kids. Mm. Yeah. You'd think we were all sensible. We don't have kids, and so what a life. Because everyone who's got kids, and they find out you don't have kids, mm. go, oh, you don't have kids. Oh, you... Oh. It's the holy grail for... Oh, you <laughs> lucky thing. Yeah. And they do, everyone. Oh, God, what a life. I remember before we had kids, we'd go out, we smiled at each other, we liked each other. Oh, God, those were the days. And then uh, you get pets and they become your kids. Yeah, I, absolutely. And then people with kids who don't have pets think you're insane. Yeah. And then Tiff will refer to them as her fur babies. And you can see them rolling their eyes on the, rins on the inside. Oh, God, fur babies, get over yourself. <laughs> I hear you. I understand. There was a time in my life I had no kids no and pets. no pets nope. and no girlfriend. I was very <laughs> fat in those days. But boy, oh boy, was I happy. <laughs> well, you had the new iPod and you were very happy. Oh, God. You? Very shiny iPod. <laughs> iPod. It was. Back in the day, I remember when we got the U2 Vertigo iPod. It was very exciting. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, so that was Friday night, I stayed in, and then Saturday I went off to do my gig in Southampton at the, at the International Boat Show. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't buy any boats. No. So it's out there really pricey. Mm. Really? But yeah, even entry-level boats are, are quite eye-watering. What was your budget? I can't remember what your budget was. Two grand, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah like 20 I grand. I, I might have pushed to 20 grand for a 60-foot yeah. boat, yeah. That's it. You wanted the Sun Seeker, didn't you? Apparently. Nowhere near. <laughs> So uh, so we did this, the, the gig on um, Saturday night. I was on after Show Ponies. Oh, the yes. The band. Yes. They I'm were very, very good. Yeah. All right, big up the Show Ponies. Mm. 
<laughs> Ask me how they were. How were? <laughs> big, big grapho joke. Hey. Um, and th- and I I didn't s- I didn't see them, but I s- I did say on the air that I would just say they were very good, even though I didn't see them. So when I got there, they'd finished. Oasis. Oh, uh, double S, yeah, yeah. Oasis tribute band. Oasis. It's not much of a change on the name, is it? <laughs> really? No. And I met them. It's like Blur with an extra R on the end. And uh, I think it was the drummer who was saying, "He goes to be fair when we started this Oasis tribute band, Oasis." There was absolutely no chance that Oasis were ever going to get back together again. So we thought, it's, not, it's never going to be a problem, is yeah. it? No one's ever going to think, hold on, Oasis are playing the International Boat <laughs> Show in Southampton. That's true. He said, and now they're back. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're keeping our heads down a little bit. So I met them. That was fine. And Good. then I uh, went and did our little DJ set, a little 90s show. And then uh, a couple of drinks afterwards, and then... Very nice. It was all lovely. The weather was lovely. Blue skies in Southampton on Saturday. It was nice. Was Gav with you? Did he go? Because Jordan came with me Jordan. on that. Oh. And Mitch popped in to see us. Mitch Johnson. Yes. Lovely. How is he? Fabulous. Good. I'm Mitch Johnson. One of the Do you best. ever need a voiceover, man? I was going to say, one of the with best voices. A rich, creamy, dreamy voice. Then uh, he called my friend Mitch Johnson. He's very... He's very, very good. Voice of the balls, right? No, that was Alan Dedico. Oh, that's Dedders. But this is this is crazy. This is going to test your age, right? So there's a couple of people who got like these port a port cabin as a dressing room, right? Which you often get the deal. There's a few of us in there. And I said, uh, they said, how do you know Mitch? And I said, I've known Mitch for years. I said, do you know what Mitch? You know what Mitch used to do? So I'm all getting ready to tell the story. Do you remember Alive and Kicking on the telly on a Saturday? And they went, no. Oh. What? Live and kicking? No, no. Live and... Saturday morning, live and... Jamie Thixton and Zoe Ball. Live and kicking. No. Ah, oh, well, he was on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined my story. And, and Mitch goes, yeah, it's a long time ago. And I went, yeah, but, and I'm... How old are you? He goes, 30, 32, whatever. And I'm like, live and kicking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I live and kicking, James. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Live and kicking. Yeah. It ran for eight. It wasn't like it was 50 years ago. No. And it was huge. It wasn't yeah. in black and white. Saturday morning, kids tally. It was the, the, the tradition. To not have heard of it. Yeah. It's unusual. I get it if you're like 20. You go, what's yeah. live and kicking? Fair, fair but enough. if you're in your 30s, you must know what live and kicking was. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, one eight one eight one one. Eight one eight one. Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute, I thought you were powering down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. One eight one. Fuzzy was it was a woman. Anyway, wait a minute, wait Anyway, Mitch was the voiceover on Live and Kicking because Live and Kicking was like a radio show, not that even that was on telly. And so they would say, "What's coming up, Mitch?" And he'd go, "Well, thank you, Zoe. Well, still to come this morning." Blah blah blah. And then he'd introduce the Rugrats. Yes, always Rugrats. He was showbiz Mitch, and he was the voice of Live and Kicking, as well as like. The voice of many, many, many things. Mm. He was a radio DJ as well. Radio many DJ, years. voiceover man, presenter, very funny, lovely, adorable, sweetheart of a man. So he came to hang out with us. <laughs> so I do this 90s hangover show with a company called Coalition. So we produce it together. And they're like my gig agent as well. So they, if you want to book me for a gig, you go to Coalition, you speak to Guy, you speak to Luke, whatever. And then me and Guy produce this 90s hangover show. So every time we do the 90s hangover, there's always somebody from Coalition there. And there's a couple of people. Luke was there this week. Mm-hmm. And Callum, who I've never met before. Okay. Anyway, Mitch was at the International Boat Show with his friend. I can't remember what his name was. Let's say David. Um, so after the gig, he goes, um, Hey, Chris. No, you be quiet. Chris, this is my friend David. Uh, David, this is Chris. And he's pointing over his shoulder at Callum. Ah. And I go... You're David now. And he goes, no, I'm not, no. And Mitch goes, what? Oh, no, not you. Move. Where's... This is David here. David. And that's Mitch. Mitch, who once ran from one pub to the other, uh, totally naked. <laughs> Did Didn't he? run, actually. Tell a lie. He walked. Did he? Yeah, we used Did to drink together a lot. Right, OK. I so you throw his... Carol McGifford in the mixer as well. Yeah. So I went this... to his flat once back in the day. It was he, he had a party pad, didn't he? I think it's fair to say that. He had a party pad with a voiceover booth, yeah. yeah. What made it a party pad? Well, just stuff Mitch. went on. Stripper you know, pole. Exactly. <laughs> Stripper oh, pole no, in the, in the hall. That. <laughs> Pool table, yeah. Pool to darts. He's the, um, he's the guy from my LA story. Do you know that LA story? No. All right, so. My friend Mitch, voiceover and live and kicking. So on a Saturday, that show would finish at, what, midday? 
and he'd often ring me and go, let's go to the pub. Let's go to the pub. Because he'd been up since the crack of dawn on Saturday morning. So we go to the pub. Sometimes Zoe and Jamie would come with us, whatever. A nice little gaggle of people. Anyway, one Saturday he rings me and he goes, hey, it's Saturday, let's go to the pub. I went, I can't go to the pub. Why not? I said, I'm on a plane. Where are you going? I'm going to LA. I've told you this, I'm about, it's my first time ever to LA. That's exciting. And he goes, well, I want to go to the pub. And I went, well, you'll have to come to LA if you want to go to the pub, because I'm going to LA. He goes, great, where are you staying? I'm staying in Beverly Hilton. Fabulous, bye. Puts the phone down. My girlfriend at the time looked at me and went, what's that about? Oh, uh, it's Mitch. So I fly to LA, check into the hotel. I'm so excited, I've never been to LA before. Los Angeles, I'm from Leeds. You don't go to Los Angeles, California if you're from Leeds. It's like, it's the place from the movies. So we go for dinner, we get back to the hotel, and there's a message on the phone. There's got a little red light flashing. Oh, you have one new message. Beep! Hello, it's me. I'm in room 7-Eleven, just like the shop. Bye! Clunk. <laughs> and my girlfriend at the time, she goes, what? I went, he's joking. He's I told him what hotel we're in, so he's just wrong and left the message. Don't worry about it. Go to sleep, wake up the next morning, 8 o'clock, Sunday morning. Phone's ringing. Hello? Oh, what a gorgeous day. Have you got a car? Let's go out. Let's go and explore LA. It's so exciting. I went, you're not here. He goes, I am here. No, you're not. I am. Well, come and knock on the door then. Okay, are you ready? No. Oh, well, I'll, I'll wait. No, come and knock on the door. If you're really here, come and knock on the door. Two minutes later. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Girlfriend's going, no. I open the door and he goes, oh my God, you've got a room like mine. <laughs> Great. Went, what the hell are you doing here? He goes... His face dropped, and he went, you told me to come, we'll go for a drink. And I'm like, yeah, but I didn't think you'd do it. He goes, well, I looked online, and I'm like, I could get a really cheap flight. Then I, I got a room at a hotel, so I'm here. How long are you here for? He goes, I don't know, three or four days, I don't know. Let's go. It's great. Next thing is we're driving around LA together. That's brilliant. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> That's Mitch. Very nice. He's so, such a nice guy as well. So it was lovely to see him on Saturday. And uh, and then got back yesterday. We have a cat sitter come around and look after the cats. Cat. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was that. And then last night I just stayed in and just panicked every time uh, Leia decided to go for a wonder. Yeah, that's. Please a... come back. I just want to. I just need you in front of me all the time, so I know you're safe. She's like, yeah, all right, calm down. What's wrong with you? So yeah, bit of a weird weekend. Highs and lows. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And Leeds United lost to Burnley. Oh. And then Jordan North sent me a message straight away. Oh. Uh, oh. That helps. Paul Bands and Nick Grimshaw. I was and uh, <laughs> giving me abuse. Morning, Jordan. I heard that. I was with him yesterday. Oh, weren't yeah. with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't talk about football this weekend, anyway. No. Oh, really? Oh, no. Oh, no, I see. I don't know what else happened. Oh, uh, no. Not much. We just, yeah. Did you have a, a dodgy ref as well? Oh, no, we had uh, 11 dodgy players. Oh. Ah. Yeah. We'd... Well, we should have had a penalty. Right. And we're in a league that doesn't have VAR. Yes. Turns out if you tackle another player from behind in the box and don't get the ball, that's totally fine. That's don't, fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Absolutely. That's fine. It's not a penalty. Yeah. It's not clear enough. Oh, dear. Mm. Who are you playing? At home. Yeah. Nottingham Forest. Oh. We lost 1-0. I mean, all the, best, all the best teams lost 1-0 this weekend. I'd say they deserved it, actually. Really? Was it a mistake and then they were very good on the counter-attack? Uh, we just didn't defend very well. And to be fair, their goal was brilliant. But anyway, oh. we're not mentioning that in the yeah. sport. Our, play, our players slipped and they were very good on the counter-attack. Right. But it was one of those games where if it had gone on for another four hours, we probably still would have scored. But yeah. then, equally, neither would have they. It's yeah. one of those one annoying of ones. Even Jordan goes, to be fair, I don't know, I got three points out of that. Mm. Oh, it's so annoying. It's very frustrating, isn't it? Oh, it's really annoying. <laughs> when your team loses a football match, it's really, really upsetting. Well, that's weird because there's nothing you can do. No. There's nothing you can do about it whatsoever. And you're like, come on, you're shouting all you like. like it's, it's not going to help. No. It's not like a player's going to... Like, if you, imagine if you're there. I get it. The, you know, the crowd can be the 12th man mm -hmm. and all that. Come on, get into it! Sorry, what was that? Get into it. Do you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm not... I'm. My, you're absolutely right. I'll now get into it. Thank you for that. Do you know, I needed that. Thank you. Here's a question. Hmm. If a manager did decide to just get someone else to come into play, can he do that? Like... If, no. Uh, I think they need to be registered. Don't yeah, they, they do. Be registered. Yeah. Ah. I, did, I did have a theory once about getting somebody from the from the cop 
and from wherever your diehard fans are and get them in at half time to talk to the players. Yeah. Would that make a difference? And I remember talking to Lee Sharp about this. Yeah. And he goes, do you know what? He goes, I actually don't think that's a bad idea. So you walk in at half time, you wouldn't nil down, your team are playing terribly, they're just not clicking. And you go, do you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything. But I'm gonna bring somebody in who is gonna say something. And this guy is called John. And he's had a season ticket for 18 years. And he's watched the first half like I have. And come in, John. What do you think? Mm. And let rip. Now, you need to choose wisely because there's a good chance that John's gonna go. I mean, love you guys. I can't believe I've been here. I've not, I've not, for 18 years I've been coming here. I've never been in this dressing room. With this. Oh, man, oh my God, James Robinson. Oh my God, my son loves you. Can I, I sit in your seat? Yeah, but if you pick the right person, what are you doing? Mm. What are you doing? You know, maybe. Yeah. You need to be careful though, because I think somebody did that, and Harry, didn't Harry Redknapp then put them on during the second half? Or something? It was a friendly. I think it was a friendly, and the bloke was shouting, "These uh, players are crap. You don't know what you're doing." All the way blah, blah, through blah. the first half, he was really laying into them. Yeah. Wasn't he? Do you know this story, Pip? Yeah, I didn't know it was Harry Redknapp. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. I've and then Harry went right. Got some, get some yeah. boots on. You're playing second half, pretty yeah. much. Didn't he score? He put him on and he scored. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Go on, if you think you can do better, yeah, put a pair of boots on. Go on, I'll put oh, you on yeah. in the second half. Yeah, all right, then Harry Redknapp, I will. He put him on and he scored. And he scored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, back to the show. Yeah. 652, you're listening to Radio X, write it down. Uh, we have an announcement to make this morning. Don't worry, we're not launching any more radio stations. No. Have you got, been listening? We've got loads. Actually, you know, I listened to a little bit to Radio X Chilled on the drive I, this morning. I think I think Radio X Chilled might end up being the most popular out of the three new stations. Do you think so? Now, so for those of you who don't know, we launched three new Radio X stations the other day. There's Radio X 90s, Radio X Noughties, and Radio X Chilled. Now, and I said this on the air, I think the Radio X Chilled name is very misleading. Because you kind of go, oh, it's Radio X chilled. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's not just... So Danny California by Red Hot Chili Peppers but, yeah, sits perfectly on Radio X chilled. It's sort of lowish tempo stuff, isn't it, yeah. as opposed to... It's, yeah. n- it's, it's not... Radio X chilled isn't like love songs. It's not soppy. It's not... It's just a little bit... So we won't play Foo Fighters Breakout. Yeah. But we could still play Foo Fighters. Exactly. I mean, Walking After You would definitely sit on Radio mm-hmm. X Chill, but then there's a few other tracks that would probably uh, work. Anyway, so I've had Radio X Chill done a lot mm-hmm. this weekend as well. Currently playing Paul Weller, You Wh- Do Something To Me. Oh, okay, which go. is, all right, which is not a great example because that's quite chilled. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> but it'll probably play Broken Stones, which again is yeah. quite chilled, but you know what I mean. It's it won't not... play Basement Jack, Where's, where's Your Head At? Would no, it? There's it no won't. Basement Jacks going on. <laughs> It might play You Somebody by Kings of Leon. Could do. Oh, I'll get a message now from Rob Stone. Now instead of music going, no, we won't. No, we don't do that, Chris. Um, anyway, it's, I think that might end up being the most popular station, even though you'd think it'd be Radio X 90s. Mm. But when you listen to it, it's actually great. Because it's chilled, but not not chilled, but chilled. But not chilled. Yeah. It's chilledish. Yeah. We call it Radio X Childish. No, this is Childish. No, this is what Childish. We're doing. Yeah, you're true. That's true. And then uh, yesterday I got a mention by Paddy McGuinness on Radio 2, which was nice. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. A few messages coming. <laughs> what was he saying? <laughs> we were in the car coming back from Southampton and we're just flicking through the radio dial. And uh, we listened to something for uh, five minutes and it was awful. And then we switched over to something else. And we listened to a bit of Radio X. And then. Uh, we put a bit of Paddy on on Radio 2, and so I sent him a message because we were stuck in traffic on the M3 listening. Oh, that's nice. It's always exciting to get your name read out. And then he read it out just before the travel news. Did he? And I'm like, when did you get good at radio? <laughs> Thinking, oh, Chris has messaged me. Oh, there's a problem on the M3. I'll read that out just before the travel yeah. news. I'm like, oh, very, very good. good. Paddy McGuinness, though, he's, it's it's so easy to do his show, though. Hey, up, oh, hey, Miles has been on, hey. He said, how do, Paddy? I'm stuck in traffic on the M3. Oh, he's stuck in traffic. Hey, let, well, let's do traffic news. Very it's good. just that. It's That's just that. Fair.
fair dues to him. That's good. And then we uh, we're WhatsApping each other, and then we just sent each other abuse back and forth, of which <laughs> none of it we can read out in the air at ah. all. Okay. I'll show it to you later. I'll make your eyes water. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, thanks again for all the lovely comments and everything. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and distract myself all the way through to 10 o'clock. We've got an announcement to make later. Mm-hmm. I'll tease you with that, and then we'll do it, what, 8 o'clock, somewhere like that. Radio, so don't miss it. Radio. And now let's switch off the cameras. The Chris Moyle Show. With Skoda. Jump into your next adventure.